Hey everybody, welcome back. Wayne here. This week we're going to talk about the stages of pain. We, we see it as that there are two stages of the pain and learning how to cope with betrayal and infidelity. And first I'm going to start with a personal story. When I was uh, 25 years old, I was involved in a youth ministry at a large church uh, in Austin. It was midsummer. We were having a pool party at one of the kids' parents' home. I dove off a diving board and over-rotated, and I hit this kid in the top of his head with the back of my left calf. He rubbed his head out. I rubbed my calf. It hurt. But we went on about the day, and you know, we swam, and we cooked hot dogs, and had water balloon fights, and all this kind of crazy stuff that you do in high school youth ministry. But by the end of the evening, my calf had swelled up almost the same size as my thigh. And I was in so much pain and I could not figure out what was going on. Two of my best friends, one of them became my wife later, drove me over to a friend of ours, another parent in the youth ministry who was a surgeon. And he took one look at me and said, we've got to get you to the hospital now. And we all looked at each other like, what? I mean, I, I could not walk. I was in so much pain. I could not put pressure on that, on any of my left, on the left leg. We get to the hospital. And what I'm learning along the way as we're going that I have a compartment syndrome. I'd never even heard of that. And that's where you break a blood vessel inside of a muscle and because of the fascia around the muscle and if the bleeding doesn't stop it just swells and swells and swells and there's no place for all that blood to go so it puts pressure on the nerves and there's no oxygen getting to the tissue. I had no idea about this. They took me into emergency surgery. They did a fasciotomy on both sides of on my calf and on the tibia and I stayed in the hospital for a week. And this was like at midnight by the time the surgeon got there. And then the next morning, the surgeon comes in and says, you don't know how lucky you are. If you had waited till in the morning, we would be amputating your leg this morning. It was just shocking to me. I couldn't believe it. For the next four to six weeks, I could not walk. I was in so much pain after they stitched me back together about a week after the initial incident. A couple of weeks after that, I went to the doctor. He took out my stitches and I still couldn't walk. And I just was blown away by how painful this was. And even the movement in my legs, I could not move my left foot, my left leg more than about two inches in front of my right as I was even trying to walk. So they took out my stitches and they said, it's most likely that you will have a limp now the rest of your life. Again, I was shocked. Number one, the, the pain of hearing that and the physical pain that I was in. So I go over to Amy, who became my wife. She was my girlfriend at the time. And we talked about all of that and what that implied. I got laid off from my job. I wish I knew now, or I wish I knew then what I know now about employment law because they let me go because of my leg. But a couple of weeks later, um, as everything began to heal, I started physical therapy. It was excruciatingly painful. But over the next several weeks, I was able to put more and more weight on that leg and take bigger steps. I was convinced I was not going to walk with a limp. I loved to run. I loved to play tennis back then. And so the pain of that was uh, just, I'd never experienced anything like it in my life. So what I want to say about stage one pain is that it comes as a result of something that happens to us that by and large, it's out of our control. Over time, the initial pain will fade. And then comes stage two. Stage two is where the personal choice begins to come to the surface and it gets exercised. How we respond or how we react to the pain reveals a great deal about us in that very moment. And here are the choices that we're faced with. We can avoid the pain. 
We can try to numb the pain. We can transmit it to others. We can try to ignore it. We can work through it. We can let the pain control us, or we can accept the pain. The problem really isn't the pain. The problem lies in our attitude towards the pain and the heart and the mindset that we bring to the pain and hopefully, ultimately, the, the healing and the recovery of that pain. So in stage one, whether we like it or not, life is filled with all kinds of pain-generating circumstances and suffering. And at times, we have to decide how we're going to react or we're going to respond. And if I accept that life is not fair and that pain is a natural part of life, suffering is a natural part of life, then I'm more likely to be free to face the situation and then choose what will bring me life ultimately. Obviously, pain created by infidelity is one of the worst. I know that after 15 years as a couples therapist, infidelity brings a pain like no other. In the initial stages of pain, it's just that there's little you can do about it. It's overwhelming to you and it overtakes you in ways that you feel out of control. And many feel like that they're not going to survive it. And I just want to say that with infidelity and the pain that it brings, what people frequently do is try to numb it through alcohol or drugs, prescription drugs or others. You may try to transmit it to the person that hurt you. That's pretty common. And I can tell you that neither one of those work very well long term. Or you may try to ignore it and pretend it's not there, but it is there. And if you suppress it, it tends to come out louder later and with a greater intensity. You may send that pain away, but I'm telling you, it just goes into the basement or somewhere else and it just lifts weights and it comes out bigger and stronger than it was before. You may try to simply avoid it. But if you've already been hurt, there's no way to avoid the pain that's already happened. And I just want to say that when recovering from infidelity or any other pain of this magnitude, there is always an alternative choice. Personally, I think the final choice is by far the best, but it really truly is just the first step. And that leads us to the second stage of pain. The second stage is where our choice becomes a part of the equation. Once the initial pain begins to subside, we have to decide how to proceed. Just like me, after that doctor told me that I would probably have a limp the rest of my life, I'm walking down the hall, 25 years old, have my life ahead of me, thinking I'm gonna have this disability now for the rest of my life. I cried, not wailing boo-hoo, but I was weepy and I was feeling sorry for myself. And I talked to Amy and we didn't know what was going to happen. But then this was my choice to begin physical therapy. I wasn't sure it was going to work. I wasn't given much hope, but it's where weeks and months of physical therapy that hurt like hell began to pay off. In infidelity recovery, at some point, you have to choose to take the relational risks to re-engage. You have to be willing to take the risk of being hurt again. You need to be willing to let yourself have a life, really. And if you don't, you'll be trapped and controlled by the betrayal. And at some level, you've made the choice to allow it to be that way. And I know that's hard to hear, but I've been doing this a long time and I've seen it. But there is a better way, a more loving, more self-caring, more fulfilling way for you to heal and not remain, you know, debilitated by the pain that you're experiencing now. I'm not suggesting in any way by risking the re-engaging with somebody that's not safe for you. And if the other person's heart isn't soft or softening, and if they're not doing what's necessary to heal the relationship or they're not taking responsibility for what they've done, then maybe they're not safe and maybe you need to separate for a while. But if you've got someone who's trying, who's trying to love and they get it, or at least they're trying to get it and is trying to be safe for you and for themselves, 
you know, there comes a point when you've got to decide whether you want to live again or you want to keep trying to avoid this pain and being hurt again. You've heard me quote C.S. Lewis. You've heard Rick, probably everybody here. We all love C.S. Lewis. And in his book, Four Loves, he says that to love at all is to be vulnerable. Love anything in your heart will be wrong and possibly broken. If you want to make sure of keeping it intact, you must give it to no one, not even an animal. You've got to wrap it around with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in a casket or a coffin of your own selfishness. But in that casket, safe and dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. To love is to be vulnerable. Those are the words of C.S. Lewis, and they stand the test of time. And I think they're so true for those of you in this betrayal trauma that you're in. I just want to encourage you all, don't let your circumstances condemn you to this hellish, joyless life. There is a way of escape. You have to grieve the pain or betrayal to get there. It takes time, a lot of time, and a lot of hard work. It's heart therapy instead of physical therapy, but in the long run, it's more than worth it. Both are more than worth it. So I just want to say that if you and your spouse want to get unstuck and gain the necessary perspective you need to move forward and heal this pain that you find yourselves in, I invite you to check out the EMS Online course to find the momentum that you might need to, to help you move forward. You can learn all about it in the Programs tab in the Affair Recovery website. All the details and the cost and the dates are there. So check it out. Thanks so much for joining me again this week. It's always good to be with you. I know we live in such a crazy time and there is hope. Stay safe. Know that we are thinking about you all. Uh, glad that you're a part of our community. Please feel free to write in the comments your suggestions on how to deal with pain, how you may have done that, that you, other people on the forums might find encouraging. So thanks so much for, for listening, and I'll be back again next week.